Hey guys, Monica here with a long overdue Tyranno Builder tutorial. Hi, is this even still relevant? Doesn't matter. Alright, I've decided to make something kind of cool today, but a little complicated, if you couldn't tell. Um, as per usual, I have the zoom in up top so you can see in detail. Please let me know if this works. Um, and I will explain what we're looking at. So first of all, let me go ahead and show you guys what we're actually doing in this tutorial. So what we're accomplishing here is an interactive top-down map. I pulled this image off of Google. I didn't make it. I don't know who made it. Please always make sure that you have the rights to images that you use in your games and that they are commercial free, blah, blah, blah. So what this tutorial and what this idea aims to hit is actually based off of, or it was inspired to me by a game called Dandelion, which is a dating sim. Um, in it, you get a free roam opportunity, which allows you to click on areas. I don't have an image for a bathroom, so <laughs> we're just going to pretend that this is a bathroom. Uh, this text is here to confirm that we did that we did correctly go to the area that is supposed to be designated for the bathroom. And when we come back to the regular area, just because I've told it to, so this is the kitchen. Again, I'm lacking in kitchen images. And, you know, this is the living room. So if we go ahead and take a look at what I've got going on here, we have at the top, choose room. And I've created this. Uh, this is a set of variables that I've placed on top of this label. Since this is our very first scene, I do need to uh, declare any variables at the top of this scene because this is what happens when the player hits new game. So if they come here and they hit, you know, new game, the first place they're going is here. So because of that, I'm declaring my variables at the top of the screen. After I've declared my variables, we start the process. And we want to make sure that this label happens after declaring our var variables, because if we have this label here and we are jumping back up here, our variables are getting reset to zero each and every time, which we do not want. If we wanted to be particularly careful about this, we can even do a new scene where we declare our variables there and that scene is never visited ever again and we continue on with the game. That would be a very safe thing to do. Um, but for now, we're just going to go with this where we've declared our variables at the very top and then we should never, ever, ever, ever visit those ever again. <laughs> now, otherwise your game will get messed up. Um, I will return to the variables in just a second. They're not necessary for this very basic part of the tutorial. I have a page break because it's just good to have yourself a page break at the very beginning. And I've removed text preemptively because of some of the logic that's happening down here. So we remove our text. Uh, now the background image is for this area, my map. In in and of itself, it does nothing, this, this map. In fact, I can go ahead and show you by trying to click on the dining room area, which has no area around it. If I click it, nothing happens. That's because the image underneath this by itself has absolutely nothing to do with what's going on. I could put it, I could put an image of a pineapple here and it would be just as effective as this map. My cat has just sat on my cord. There we go. Okay. Um, now this is where it becomes an interactive, an interactable map is with these clickable areas. So these clickable areas are where the, uh, the game becomes a game. And I'm going to go ahead and showcase this by creating the dining room area. So we move down into our images section of Tyranno Builder and we get our clickable area and we pop it down. Right now, this does nothing, but we know that we're going to send it to a dining room of which I have no label as yet, so we're going to have to create that. Let's go ahead and position it so we get our clickable area, which is this right here. And I'm going to go ahead and line it up with my dining room area on the map. And I'm actually going to stop it here, uh, specifically because this area is, a, uh, is also a clickable area. So you want to make sure that your clickable areas do not overlap. In fact, I might pull it back just a little bit, just to make sure that it doesn't overlap with my exit. Because very important, if your player is clicking here thinking that they're hitting the exit, and they're not going to the dining room area, they're going to get upset. So you want to make sure that you have very clear, definable boundaries for where your player clicks. In fact, this image is not great for that because of the fact that it does not have definable boundaries, like the bathroom, actually. The bathroom is perfect because it, and the bedroom, they're perfect because they have these definable boundaries, but that's just, that's theory at that point. So we've now created our clickable area for the dining room, but we do need to create a, um, 
a label for our dining room. And this is going to be identical across all of these. So we see here we have exit. So let's go ahead and pop it here above the exit. Just, you know, or, you know, this would if this was your first. We will type dining room as our label name so that we know that this is for the dining room. We can go ahead and at this point or any point come back up and go to our target and select dining room. So now we see our clickable area and it shows us right here that it's going to the dining room label. So we can come back down to our dining room and we can go ahead and change the background so we denote that the player is no longer on the map. I'm just gonna, I don't have a dining room. I'm gonna choose a random, uh, we'll do the back of the school, whatever. And to show that we have correctly, you know, obviously you wouldn't do this in your game. You wouldn't just say, you've entered the, you've come to the dining room and then you would leave, you know, you, you'd put something else. So we're going to put, you've come whoop, to the dining room. Perfect. And nothing else happens here in this particular game. You might want to make something happen in your dining room. Who knows? And we're going to go ahead and tell this to jump back up to the choose room section. So obviously we want to show text because at the beginning where uh, of our of our scene we have it removing text and then we say you've come uh, to the dining room and we are exiting back to the choose room area to re you know keep this loop active. So now if I mouse over the dining area there's a nice clickable location we go it says you've come to the dining room and we go back to the choose room. Perfect. It's that simple. The only reason it looks complicated is because I have a lot of different rooms. Here we have the bathroom, we have the bedroom, and some of these are actually a little complex. So what I wanted to do next was show you exactly what you could do, just one thing that you could do with this type of gameplay. If you might be thinking, well, what do I, what can I do with this? Because obviously this is not a very creative application of this idea. I've gone ahead and created a something a little, oops, we don't want to go that far. I've created a little something extra to show you. So if we go into the bedroom now, it says you are now in the bedroom probably. You're in a bedroom. I have two text boxes that are showing for this. What would you like to do? And we have two options, relax or leave. So we can relax. It says you lie on the bed and relax for a bit. It does nothing for you, but you feel better. You're in the bedroom. We can leave and it goes back to the overworld. This is great. Let's go ahead and take a look at what this, uh, how this is accomplished. So if I go over to the, I okay, hang on, let's go back to scene one real quick. First, let's find our bedroom label, which is right here. Here we have our normal thing that I've set up earlier. We have our label, bedroom. We're changing the background into what is actually a living room, but this was the closest I had. And then we show our text and it says, you are now in the living room. Now I am making use of the call function, which can be found here. Call allows me to quickly jump to another scene and or it just it could be in this scene quickly jump to another label and this is very similar to the idea of a function i'm effectively calling a function that will create to that will uh call some logic and then it will be able to return to this exact point in my scene and continue on with the logic in this case jumping back to choose room so if i go over now and look at this call i'm having it go to a scene called bedroom and a label called actual bedroom. So let's take a look at that scene. In the bedroom section, here's my label, actual bedroom. You'll notice that there are no variables here. I have it showing text, and here's my second text box that we saw, which is the, you are in the bedroom, what would you like to do? Now we have our options. We have a branch button called relax, and I also have some other branch buttons that are based off of something that is a little, this is taking this a little further even. I'll come back to that. And down here, we have our, our relax button goes to this relax label. You lie on the bed and relax for a bit. It does nothing for you, but you feel better. And then it jumps back to this actual bedroom. So now, oh wait, actually, one more thing in this bedroom scene. If we come down to this leave option, which is up here outside of any functionality, there's no if statements for leave. If we look at leave, the leave label, its only thing is return. And this, like I said, this return will go a directly back to where this call button, where is it, this call function is, and it will continue on from there. So this is a great way to just save on functionality. It's basically just making a very quick call to another scene and then jumping back to where it left off, and then it continues on. Now, you might be thinking, 
what more could you do with that? So let's take a closer look at some of my functionality here. I have some other, well, okay, let's talk, let's talk about my variables because actually it will make more sense with this. I have some variables here. I have a variable called makeup and I have a variable called book. These are both set to false when the game starts. My beauty is set to zero and my smarts are also set to zero. How sad. I have neither beauty nor smarts. Now, if we come over here to the bedroom, we can take a look and say, see that this branch button, read book, and this branch button, use makeup, are inside if statements. These if statements, if expression is the f.book, which is my variable, is equal to true, it will show this branch button, read book. This is very important. This wording is vital. Now we have this one. Oh, this is also very, very important. It will throw you an error if you do not close your if statement. We have an end if. The reason it is not an else if or an, just an else is because uh, this, this next button is not reliant on this button. They are two separate buttons that can show independent of each other. So we have an end if. This if statement is done. These three. This next if statement says if makeup is equal to true, then we have a branch, a branch button that says use makeup. And then, of course, we, end, we close our if statement. So we already saw what this looks like. Without makeup or a book, all it will show me is relax or leave. Because I don't have any books and I don't have any makeup. And obviously, that's all you have to do in a, in a bedroom. Um, now, if we come back to the scene, I have another area that I've also set up. The exit. If we go to the exit, it'll say you've left the house. You are now visiting the shop. So now we have buy makeup, buy book, and we have leave. If I buy the makeup, you bought the makeup, you're now visiting the shop, we can leave. And if we go back to the bedroom, you're now in the bedroom, probably. You're in the bedroom, what would you like to do? And we have our makeup. So if we, this is only showing up because we quote unquote bought the makeup, which was just clicking a button. I don't have money in this game. It's not a complex situation. I use my makeup. It says you practice doing your makeup. Now your beauty is one. And if I click it again, it'll say now your beauty is two. So obviously we have a way of increasing stats in a room dependent upon the items that you have. Still inspired obviously by Dandelion, which is a dating sim that I mentioned earlier. So let's take a look at our shop, right? We have our actual, okay, this is my label. This is not a great name. I named it actual shop because that I was just following the way that I titled the bedroom. We have our show text. It says you are visiting the shop. And now we have our if statements. If we buy the makeup, we do not want our, our player to be able to buy multiple makeups. It doesn't make sense. There's no reason to have more than one makeup. So if they do not have makeup, so if makeup is equal to false, they don't have it, they don't own their makeup, this button appears and if if they this means we don't need any other functionality because it means if it's true this button does not need to show up because they already have it there's no point for them to buy makeup if there's no reason to have more than one makeup same thing with our book if our book is false we could buy the book or yeah if we don't have a book the button for buying a book appears and then we close our if statement and then this button is available no matter what because you should be able to leave a shop. <laughs> it's not reliant on anything unless your story says it's reliant on something. Now, here's our functionality for when we buy the makeup. We have our label, buy makeup. Our script, we want to evaluate our expression, f.makeup equals true. One equals sign. The reason it is one equals sign is because we are setting it. We are not saying if it is true we are setting it to true so now we own makeup now that we have hit this label we've bought the makeup it says you bought the makeup i just typed it out in here instead of a text box and then we jump back to the actual shop if the player hits leave because we have used our call functionality we will return to the beginning of this uh return to where our call button was back in scene one so if we hit exit our background changes show text you've left the house call our shop scene, the label actual shop, and bada bing bada boom. When we come back, it hits jump, and so we go back to the scene. So let's take a look at what that looked like again. Here we have our bedroom. We have, you know, sitting in the bedroom, what would you like to do? Our only options are relax or leave because this TV is fake and we don't have a book or makeup. So we leave. Now we can leave because we know we need to buy a book or makeup in order to have either option. So let's buy the book now. We bought a book. You are now visiting the shop. You'll notice that the buy book button has disappeared because we asked it to. 
we leave and we go to the the bedroom. You are now in the bedroom. What would you like to do? Our read book option has appeared. Love my perfectly in line buttons. We'll read the book. You read a good book. You feel smarter for it. Now your smarts is one. <laughs> Whatever. What would you like to do? I'm going to read the book again. Your smarts are two. And now you have an option to increase your stats in a game if you wanted stats. And see, we come back. Our buy book option is still gone because that variable is still true. We buy our makeup. And uh, now we leave. There's nothing else to get at the shop. That's all shops have. It's books and makeup. And uh, now we have all of our options. So we can use books we can use makeup we can now increase our stats however much we like and if you want more inspiration maybe you have a dating sim and you have a character who's only interested in smart girls so if you're upping your makeup and you want to go after the character who likes smart girls and your smarts are zero well then obviously he's not gonna like you so you want your player to be able to get an item or do an event that allows them to increase their smarts and this gives you a sort of game that has some um uh, control or there's there's a word that I'm looking for strategizing obviously some you know very simple strategizing but allows you to customize your game to have stats and things that allow you to build those stats so you can build off of this concept and uh, I hope this was helpful and I hope it made a lot of sense I know there's a whole lot of things going on on this screen it's a lot less complicated than it looks it's very repeatable very simple uh, if you guys want me to go over the creation of this process again, I can create a follow-up video and we can go through creating the shop step by step. I thought this might be a little easier to show it all kind of here by itself. But uh, yeah, thank you so much for watching and I will hopefully see you guys soon. Bye.